All these are little things that make it the most perfect English cathedral. We have arrived in Wells, England's smallest city. Wells is located in the county of Somerset on the edge of the Mendip Hills, about 22 miles from the city of Bath. I came here for one big reason, to see the famous cathedral. My hair is now up on top of my head because it is a blistering hot day, but I'm so excited to be here at Wells Cathedral finally, and to be here with Ian and I'm gonna say my cousins, Mark and David. And Mark has agreed to be my expert tour guide for today and walk around the cathedral and educate me about why it is such an amazing place. Wells was the first Gothic cathedral built in England. It is known among scholars, historians, and cathedral fans as one of the top 10 cathedrals in England because of its historical, religious, and architectural importance. In this video, we will highlight some of its unique features. If you enjoy this video, please also watch my Durham Cathedral video, which I'll link at the end and in the description below. It is another top cathedral of huge importance and interest. Having a transept with a tall central tower is a very English thing. If you look at cathedrals on the European continent, you will not typically see this layout. All right, here's Mark. The voice you hear after this shall be Mark <laughs> telling you about the cathedral. The main entrance to Wells Cathedral is through the cloister, and it's unusual because this cathedral never had monks. So there was really no need for there to be a cloister at all. But I think they just decided that for the clergy they would build one, because this cathedral was built no later than 1186. Those of you who watched my Durham Cathedral video, you will know the first time I went there it was closed because they were filming inside. And we've just heard that the BBC is filming here today at Wells Cathedral. So let's see how much disturbance that causes in the force. That's the door the bishop has to bang on when he's being installed here with his, his crozier. Wells Cathedral is the first cathedral that was built in the truly early English style. That means it, no, it owes nothing to France and the cathedrals of France, the English went for longitude rather than height. So the emphasis is not on the vertical here. English cathedrals are really quite short, but they are very long. And you'll notice that those leaping arches in the Triforium, that is English, that's not French. The great strainer arches, which were inserted because they were going to complete the tower and it, it needed support. To my mind, because the cathedral is dedicated to St Andrew, remember St Andrew was crucified on a saltire cross, and that almost forms a saltire cross, the scissor arch. It's similar to the flag of Scotland. So Clear with three. the ground floor... That's called the arcade. And yes. then the next level Then the triforium, is... and then you go up to the clear story. There are usually three layers in most cathedrals like that. Can you see all the stiff leaf foliage around yeah. the top of the columns? Yes. Now that is really good quality here. And it's because it's built of dolting limestone here, I think it is. And so they were able to carve it crisply like that. Well, I also love these faces here. Mm -hmm. This is the nave altar. The high altar is oh, through there. This is the, this nave, is the nave altar. altar. What are these little rooms off to the side? These are little chantry chapels mm -hmm. that would have been built by some rich um, bishop years ago or a lord and dedicated to have masses said for them after they were dead. Only the stairs serve two purposes. They serve the purpose to take you to the chapter house, which is on the first floor, and then it goes on up over into Vicar's Close, which is the oldest inhabited street in Europe, where the gentlemen of the choir and the clergy would live. So they could go across to their houses without getting wet or cold in winter. Please stay tuned for my Wells City video next Friday when I'll share more beautiful drone footage filmed by my hubby Ian 
along with our visit to the Vicar's Close, Bishop's Palace, St. Cuthbert's Church, and a general wander around Wells City Centre. This is the Chapter House of Wells, and it's regarded as the finest in England. We're one story up, and the roof is supported by a central column. It is all stone, but the majority of the ribs are what are called tiercerons. They don't actually support the roof. Every, every few of now and again, you'll get one that is structural, but the majority of them are purely decorative. They're not there to hold the roof up. Um, that's why there's so many clustered like a sort of palm tree in the middle. And over at the far end of the chapter house, the bishop would sit and he would have his um, various chaplains at the side of him. And all of these would be the various prebendaries and canonries of the diocese sitting around. So if he ever had a, a court of the whole diocese, all the clergy would attend here. This is the high altar and it is in this area, it's called the presbytery. It means the area for priests. And opposite us there is the throne of the Bishop of Bath and Wells. And it's one of very few stone thrones in England. Canterbury is stone, so is Norwich and uh, Durham is too. This one is also stone, Exeter's is wood. And this is where the choir sit. Wells has some very fine misericords. This is, it, it comes from um, misericordia for pity, so that the seat tips up, so that an elderly priest, if he was struggling to say the offices, he could just perch his bottom on there and seem as though he was standing when he was half sitting. They're all very old and it's a shame they're not tipped up because yeah. there's some very funny ones. You get peasants exposing their bottoms and things like that. Oh, and, and, uh, and you get you get geese preaching to the peasants to say what they thought of the bishop. You know, it? These 17th century misericords were on display in another area of the cathedral, showing fanciful images like this one of someone slaying a dragon. And I'm not sure what this is, but it looks like a colorful story. Behind the high altar, there is the Lady Chapel and the Retro Choir. It was a stroke of genius, the way they've created space with all the different arches and pillars and so on. It's like entering a Gothic casket. In England, Lady Chapels often went at the far east end of the cathedral and this would have been a later addition to the main cathedral. And here the vaulting is um, heading out of early English and into decorated. You can see all the, um, the windows are decorated rather than early English. And we've now got Tiercerone vaults with Leern vaults joining them, which have no structural purpose whatsoever. They're just for decoration. And the Lady Chapel is in honour of the Virgin Mary. Yes. The only time you don't have a Lady Chapel is if the cathedral is dedicated to Notre Dame or Our Lady, in which case the high altar is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin, so you don't need a Lady Chapel. The Lady Chapel existed in all its splendour in the 14th century, but unfortunately it was ransacked by Puritan soldiers in the 17th century because they believed the chapel to be too reminiscent of the Catholic past. This is the tomb of the Bishop of Bath and Wells from the early 1300s. He is the bishop who built Vickers Close, which I will show you in next week's video. He's fully vested as a bishop. You can see he's wearing his um, alb underneath, then he's got the dalmatic of a deacon, then he's got the chasuble of a priest, and he's wearing the mitre of a bishop, and he, he would have had this crook has been snapped off. That would have gone around here. And that's what he knocks on the door when he... Yes, yes. 
The tomb is interesting yet sad because it is absolutely covered in names and initials that people have carved in it. Many you can see were carved in the 1700s. And his feet are resting on these little heraldic dogs. This is the tomb of Thomas Beckington, who was Bishop of Bath and Wells, 1443 yeah, to 1465, and he was responsible for the penniless porch. And this is called a cadaver tomb. If you notice underneath, the bishop is lying naked like anybody else in death. And then on top, he's shown in his finery as Bishop of Bath and Wells. He's worse than naked, he's a skeleton. <laughs> yes, yes. There are many of these cadaver tombs in England. Just to show us that we're, we're all... Um, we equal when we die. This cope chest is where the cope, or outer liturgical vestment, of the bishop would be stored. This particular chest was made from locally sourced oak in the early 1100s. I was interested to see that because these cloaks are somewhat circular in design, the chest is in a triangular shape, so that the copes can be folded and stored to best preserve them. Thankfully, we were not disturbed by the BBC crew, as this is all that I've seen of it, but we were able to see all of the cathedral. So this little thing is the font? Yes, and it is a Saxon font. It's very ancient, it's pre yes. Pre-Norman. Yes. So it's just interesting because I'm surprised that the cover is not more elaborate. Mm. I mean, we went to Chewkesbury Abbey and the oh, cover yes. is so yeah. high, and then yeah. Durham Cathedral, it goes on for oh, that's enormous. Yeah. meters and meters. No, this is the font of Wells Cathedral. Yeah. In the center of the transept, there's fan vaulting coming from each corner. Anyone a fan of very old doors, like my friend Krista? If so, you would love this beauty here at the cathedral. It looks absolutely ancient. So these Gothic windows are all lined up. And then we have these two here, which are truncated so that they could install the scissor arch in the middle of the cathedral. So for those of you who are curious, I just spoke to a chap who's part of the BBC production and he said that what they are filming is a British drama series called Dodger, which is kind of like an Oliver Twist story. It was fun seeing some actors dressed up in costume for the BBC production. I caught this monk and this barefoot monk relaxing in the 95 Fahrenheit heat and listening to his headphones. Quite the anachronism. Now, do you spot any difference between the one now? Look at the top three arches. Oh, yes, they've got, uh, in the book, they don't have this That's statue. right. In 1980s, it was filled with what should be there, which is Christ, cherubim on one side and seraphim on the other. Christ in majesty from the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And below him, there are the 12 apostles, and they've all been um, redone. Oh, all restored the yep. 12 apostles. We get the wrong impression of Gothic architecture. When this was built, that would have been painted in many lurid colours uh -huh. because it provided the backdrop for the great Easter service. Uh -huh. And we can't see them here, but the choir would be at the top of the building there. No! And they would be singing through the saints oh. that were up there while the Passion Play was performed down here. Wow. So this was done as a frontispiece to the Easter tide festivities. Wow, that's amazing. That's why it's so elaborate. We can thank the BBC for that big white truck that's blocking our view. 
The two towers on the front look a bit truncated because they weren't intended to be towers. They were intended to be part of that backdrop to the Easter services, as Mark was saying. Be sure to check out our video of the epic Durham Cathedral next. It is seriously one of the very best videos on my channel. If you're interested in our other adventures in Somerset, here is a link to that playlist as well. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Wells Cathedral. We'll see you next Friday for our wander through the city of Wells. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.